So, um, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for coming. I know that Christoph alluded to, um, of course, I speak English with, uh, I hope, with uh, only a little Scottish accent, but I don't apologise for my Scottish accent. Um, it's great to be here. Remarkably, this is my first visit to Munich. Um, very impressed. Uh, more importantly, um, we have a great partner, but the German market is such an important market for the, certainly for the private, uh, privately owned whiskey companies. It's, uh, it's a real kind of acid test of where the journey is going. And uh, things will continue, generally is, it also influences the, the kind of close uh, European countries like Poland and Switzerland and uh, not France, because France is a totally different dimension altogether. The same way in Belgium and Holland, Denmark, it's a big player in terms of what is happening in the single malt markets. Um, and we're greatly, listen, we are, we are blessed and privileged to be working with uh, Christoph and before that with his father. And we've had fun, and actually important, we've had fun along the way. And that's really important. It's not just about... Um, delivering a business. You know, if, if you wake up in the morning, you've got a smile on your face, really, really important. Um, and I hope that tonight we'll get an opportunity, I will choose to have an opportunity to explain the kind of the role of the blender. The, the blender's role is, is it an art, is it a science? And in many ways, of course, it's an art, it's instinct. And uh, I'm in the fortunate position that actually I'm a qualified chemist. So when all of my instincts come to bear on the, the problem or indeed the, the, the plan or the project or the future, um, and it all happens, then I understand the chemistry that allows it to happen. So that's the first part of the, the explanation of this evening's journey and there will be more to follow. And more importantly, thank you for coming. It's wonderful to be able to work with uh, with, a, with a very old whiskey, and uh, the journey to get there sometimes is complicated. Um, and in this case, this journey, when we inherited, when we acquired Glenallachie, we knew we required some very very interesting inventory, um, and that's always a challenge. You know, if you if you're acquiring a distillery, make sure that um, the important part of the whole experience is that there is sufficient inventory of the right ages that are going to support the whole experience. And we knew that um, as soon as we acquired, we had, this is 1980, I think 1989 casts, we knew that uh, it started the journey in fresh American barrels. And in terms of structure, in terms of flavor structure, what, what American barrels will bring to the experience in terms of, it'll give, give you, it'll bring you vanilla, butterscotch, honey, and these casks have been, and this is a little bit of the chemistry attaching to it, these casks have been toasted and charred. So the reality is that in the structure of the cask, and as a blender, it's really important to know that in terms of the flavor contribution, the, as long as you get the structure of the new fill correct, the casks will deliver something like 70% 70, 70 of the flavor experience. Um, so it's really important to understand what is the role of the cask? What are we doing here? So the first maturation experience is that they've been charred, they've been toasted. So the structure of the cask, the cellulose is start breaking down into sugars and then the heating of the sugars chars it into treacle and toffee. So the kind of flavors you're getting, it's no great surprise that you're gonna get honey, butterscotch, you're gonna get treacle notes. As well as that, some of the kind of tannins and the lignans are breaking down into things like, I know it's chemical terms, eugenol, uh, and these are, and terpenes, and these are giving you the, the giving you the, the spices like cinnamon, cardamom, um, kind of ginger notes. So we know what to expect. So that's the building, that's the building point from the first start, the first fermentation period. Then we looked at the cast and said, look, we think this journey can be improved by um, putting some of the casts into PX Sherry, 
and some into all of us Sherry. What were we trying to achieve with that? What we were trying to achieve was with the PX, of course, you're going to get stewed plums, you're going to get, I'm not sure, in I think Germans know what Christmas cake is, but that kind of note, um, maybe more intense honey. The Oloroso is going to give you wonderful notes of mocha and coffee, raisins, even dates and figs. So that, these are the building blocks that we were driving into the second maturation period. And then as a blender, you look and think how wonderful it is to have an experience to work with older whiskey. What is happening in the, actually in the cask itself? Uh, and that's not just what we're extracting from the cask, but the chemical reactions that are happening in the liquid. And if you can taste pomegranate or maybe even pineapple, then you know that you've got a really, really very, very old mature experience. And that's, that's delivered by things called the long chain esters. And so what you're going to taste tonight is, I hope, a marriage of some very, very complex flavours. Um, you're going to get vanilla, butterscotch, honey. You're going to get the treacle. You're going to get the toffees. You're going to get the figs. You're going to get dates, mocha, and you're going to get dark chocolate. And you know what? That'll be wonderful. Enjoy.